A cosmonaut named Jakub Pesa has been traveling alone on the edge of the solar system for six months. Though proud, he can't help but worry about the life and wife he left behind on Earth. After discovering an ancient creature in the bowels of the ship, the creature offers companionship to the lonely cosmonaut. The movie begins with Yakov participating in an interview for the Euro space program. His solo journey has lasted 189 days and he is now on the outskirts of Jupiter. Yakov explains that his mission involves collecting and analyzing particles from the Chor cloud. In the interview, a young girl named Anna calls Yakov the loneliest man in the world as he is farther from anyone than anyone in history. Yakov denies feeling lonely but his expression betrays him. His sleep is frequently disturbed by the loud noise from the malfunctioning toilet. When he requests repairs, he is denied as fixing the broken cameras is the priority. The technician Peter asks if Yakub is sleeping, and Yakub admits he is struggling. Yakub is also concerned because he hasn't heard from his wife, Linka, for some time, and Peter has no news from her either. Yakub's commanding officer, Commissioner Tuma, watches a video message from Lena intended for Yakub. In the message, Lena talks about planning to divorce Yakub. Tuma decides not to show the video to Yakub to avoid adding to his already considerable stress, especially since Yakub is taking Doram to temporarily treat his insomnia. One night, Yakub is abruptly woken from sleep and, looking in the mirror, sees something crawling under his skin. He struggles as a spider leg emerges from his nose before retreating. Yakub desperately tries to pull the spider from his mouth before waking up from the nightmare, gasping and grasping his mouth. The next day, the coup successfully completes the chore sample collection simulation and starts working on it. He contacts Peter who is stressed about the broken cameras on the ship and asks him to have someone check on Lena since she hasn't been calling. As Jakob sits in front of Check Connect, the screen flickers and an unfamiliar voice calls his name. When Jakob asks who it is, he receives no answer. He contacts Peter again to ask if Check Connect was hacked, but Peter assures him it wasn't and informs him that Lena is visiting her mother for a few days. Yakub is later woken by a thud somewhere on the ship. Investigating the noise, he finds a huge extraterrestrial arachnid staring back at him. He quickly closes the door and contacts Peter, asking if there is a secret camera installed in the toilet. Peter confirms there is a safety camera, but it's currently down. When Yakub opens the door again, the arachnid crawls out, speaking in the same voice Yakub heard through Check Connect and reassures him that it means no harm. Frightened, Yaku goes to the airlock and suits up, requesting Peter to deploy the decontaminant to kill the arachnid. Peter, unaware of the alien's presence since Yakub avoids mentioning it, follows Yakub's instructions. As Yakub waits for the decontamination to finish, he recalls a memory of Linka. Peter, still in the dark, advises Yakub to see a psychiatrist upon returning home, explaining the mental toll of prolonged solitude in space. Seeing the arachnid again, Yaku decides to communicate with it. He learns that the creature was traveling to the edges of the solar system when it encountered the ship. Curious about humans, the arachnid had studied them extensively but still couldn't fully understand Yakub. The alien explains that it entered the ship sensing Yakub's loneliness. Still unsure if the arachnid is real or a hallucination, Yakub tries to touch it but is warned not to as physical contact is a violation for the arachnids. Yakub, hoping it was all a dream, drinks a lot of Doram and goes to sleep. He dreams about Linka but wakes up confused feeling like he is watching himself argue with her. When he sees the arachnid again, he asks if it is causing these visions. The arachnid reveals that it can enter his mind, reading his thoughts, dreams, and memories. The extraterrestrial explained that it sensed Yako's wife was pulling away and wished to help alleviate his emotional distress. Meanwhile, Lena confided in her mother about her decision to move to a place for pregnant women who are alone. She expressed her love for Yakov and his ambition but felt invisible in their relationship. For days the arachnid remained on the spacecraft, and Yakov kept his distance, distrusting the creature. One day, he found the arachnid sleeping in the same room he first discovered it, hugging the humming tube that had attracted it. Amused, Yakov decided to open up and even named the extraterrestrial Hughes, after a person his father often talked about, the man who built the astronomical clock in Prague. Hughes became Yakov's friend, and with Hughes' presence, Yakov felt less lonely. Discussing the meaning of the opera song, Ruzulka, Hughes triggered memories of Yakub's early days with Lena, making Yakub sad as he pleaded with Hughes to stop probing his thoughts. That night, Yakub woke up with a jolt, overwhelmed by childhood memories. He confronted Hughes, who admitted entering his thoughts but stopped due to the overwhelming guilt Yakub harbored. Yakub shared the traumatic memory of his father's death. His father, a Communist Party member and informant, was a good man who did bad things. Witnessing his father's death traumatized Yakub. He took the solo mission hoping to atone for his father's sins. 
Hu sensed this and advised Yaakov to focus on being a good father to his unborn child, something his father wasn't. Commissioner Tuma visited Lena to discuss the video message she sent. Lena admitted she didn't send it to Yaakov to protect his mental health. Tuma sought to understand why Lena decided to divorce Yaakov while he was so far from Earth. Lena didn't explain, she didn't need to. Before leaving, Tuma reminded Lena of when she asked Yaakov why they still called each other despite the silence. Tuma stated that the silence was the point. Yaakov and Lena's silent calls were meaningful because they were silent together. The chore collection simulation concluded, and Yaakov approached the chore cloud. He saw tiny specks of the cloud inside the ship and in awe, tried to capture them but failed. Hughes explained that it was primordial matter that couldn't be held or contained. Yakub watched the grains drift out of the spacecraft and attempted to contact Control to report his findings. Realizing he had lost communication with Control, Yakub felt a profound sense of isolation. Yakub and Hughes watched as they neared the chore cloud. Yakub was concerned about what would happen, but Hughes reassured him that it was indescribable and they might experience it together later. Hughes tried to discuss Lena, but Yakub was distant. So, Hughes showed him what Lena went through during his absence. Ambitious Yakub had neglected his pregnant wife. Lena had a miscarriage with their first child, and Yakub wasn't there for her. She suffered alone and Yakub's dream didn't include her. Yakub teared up as Hughes asked if the pain caused by his choices was valuable to him. Despite this, Yakub continued working, frustrating Hughes, who then showed him another memory, Lena crying while expressing her pride in Yakub. Hughes revealed the truth behind those tears. Lena was proud but also deeply hurt because Yakub was drifting away. Hughes made Yakub realize his selfishness and lack of understanding towards Lena. Yakub's loneliness was self-inflicted. He chose his ambitions over connecting with those who mattered, facing the consequences now. Disappointed, Hughes decided to leave. Yakub tried to stop him but Hughes angrily pinned him down and warned him before departing. Hughes' departure left Yakub feeling more alone than ever, and he cried as he finally admitted his wrongdoings. Yakov fixed the communications and contacted Peter, asking him to visit Lena and help him talk to her. Peter complied, letting Lena hear Yakov's heartfelt apology. Yakov expressed regret for neglecting her and living for the wrong reasons, wanting to be a better man for Lena. He apologized and hung up. Just then, Hughes returned, relieving Yakov. Hughes explained he didn't want Yakov to face the beginning alone. Yakov noticed Hughes struggling to breathe. Hughes revealed that he barely escaped the Gams, who destroyed his kind. Saddened, Yakub embraced his alien friend for the first time. As Yakub entered the chore cloud, it was broadcast to the whole country. Commissioner Tuma praised Yakub for making the Czech Republic proud by beating South Korea to investigate the Purple Spectre. Yakub deployed FURTA for sample collection but encountered unexpected interference. Hughes was gasping and drifting out of the spacecraft, and Yakub, ignoring the control team's orders, worried over Hughes. Control panicked over FURTA's system failure and numerous malfunctions, ordering Yakub to abort the mission due to extreme danger. Yakub ignored the control team's warnings. He only cared about saving his extraterrestrial and arachnid friend. He went to the airlock, donned the EMU suit, and informed Peter that he was leaving the spacecraft. Despite Peter's pleas, Yakub drifted towards Hughes. Upon reaching Hughes, he hugged him and asked if he was okay. Hughes praised Yakub's bravery but warned that the Gams would soon weaken him enough to consume his flesh. They had little time left. As they drifted, gazing at the chore cloud, Yakub recalled a near-drowning experience from his youth. Hughes reassured him that this wasn't the end and pulled him into the center of the chore cloud. There, Yakub discovered profound truths about himself and the universe. The chore cloud represented both the beginning and the end, containing every aspect of Yakub's life. His past, future, Lena, Hughes, every heartbreak, and every joy. Yakub realized how little he knew about the universe and remembered what truly mattered to him. He recalled falling in love with Lena and found himself falling even deeper. Having completed his task, Hughes spoke his final words. Hughes began and ended in the chore cloud, but Yakub's journey wasn't over yet. He still had a life to return to, he just needed to listen to the silence. Yakub watched as Hughes slowly disintegrated into specks before completely disappearing. Yakub then stared into the light in silence. Back on Earth, Linka awaited any news of Yakub, gazing up at the purple cloud in the sky with a smile. She received a call and upon answering, heard a female voice speaking in Korean followed by Yakub's voice. Yakub told her that if he had known then what he knows now, he never would have left. Lena replied that even if she had known then what she knows now, she would still choose to love Yakub. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Let us know what movie you'd love us to recap next.